Strong, hyper-independent children are actually not strong. They're actually much more vulnerable than any other, but they've adapted and they've reacted to their environment by pretending to be strong. Being a strong child is a facade. A child is not supposed to be strong, meaning a child is not supposed to be able to take on the world on their own. A child is not supposed to be able to meet their needs on their own. A child is a child is not supposed to pretend that what is happening to them is something they can cope with. Children who were expected to be strong, who were forced into becoming adults with emotional responsibilities towards their parents, were robbed of the right that they had and the permission and the luxury childhood gives to be fully vulnerable in a supposedly safe environment so that you can grow into a resilient adult. And resilience means you have a faith that you can overcome things based on practice. But the whole being strong thing is more like an armor that vulnerable children hypersensitive children, soft, kind children build in order to survive being raised in harsh environments. I think they will give you the title of being a strong child as a way to say, look, they've been through so much and they've, they've survived, or they can adapt to anything, or they're um, whatever, they're able to overcome things very quickly. I don't have to worry about them. I don't have to worry about them. I actually worry about my other kids. They're so like this. There's always a kid like that in every family. And uh, that kid also needs permission to be weak. That kid also needs permission to have fears, also needs permission to not be able to cope with things and ask for help. But for some reason, some parents see the emotional intelligence of their children and their capabilities as a sign that those kids have an ability to take care of their own selves. They're like, I'm not worried about them. They'll figure it out. They are resilient. They're strong. But what this child is learning is that I have to deal with my own problems, my own feelings, with my own life, which means I'm just going to keep everything to myself. I'm not going to share what's wrong with me because... I'm the strong one, remember? This is especially powerfully happening and damagingly happening in homes where children, some children, for example, may have like a health issue. Uh, and so there's one child that is like, has needs, is throwing tantrums, whatever, has some sort of difficulty. And then the parent will be like, can't you see that your sister or your brother is struggling and you have to whatever? So that child learns very early on, you're a burden. Don't burden us with your feelings. Somebody else's needs are more important than yours. Don't be weak. You're not weak. You have no reason to be weak. Are you sick? No. Are you this? No. So why are you weak? So these children become adults that need permission in order to feel weak. And by weak, I mean just not so defended all the time or verbalizing that they need help or saying that they need support, or saying that they don't feel so good. And so what these children are raised to become is hyper-independent, which is a, a counter-identification to not being, feeling ashamed to have needs <laughs> because they weren't able to depend on anybody for their needs because apparently they weren't supposed to have those needs. Uh, and so they have a fear of depending on others. Uh, because that means they will be failed massively again. And that means that in their eyes, they will become vulnerable again. They will lose control. And of course, they will definitely be disappointed as they were in the beginning. And what a massive disappointment it must be to not be able to rely on anyone but yourself. I know it sounds empowering, when we put it in the words of, oh, 
rely on yourself, be. But in reality, this hides a lot of pain, a lot of disappointment, and a lot of shame for having needs, for having weaknesses, meaning there's things that you just cannot do. There's fears that you just cannot face. There's things that you need help with. And so strong children wear this armor of strength, which becomes a wall in between them and the world. And a wall that they're sitting behind and they're saying, I don't need any of you. But if they were being honest, they'd be saying, I needed you, but you failed me. So why would I ever try again? I'm just going to take care of myself in the best way that I can. And that's not to say that that can't be something people can do. We can somewhat survive that. But we're missing out on what it's like to have interdependent relationships in which you're neither dependable on someone or like super addictedly dependent, neither never need a soul. Finding that golden line, though, requires an amount of risk that many trauma survivors are not willing to take. And who blames them for not wanting to do that? Because at the end of the day, what these hyper-independent, strong children, now adults, are trying to avoid is to be let down again. Being let down is a massive disappointment. Go lay down, baby. Don't make noise. Mommy working, please. Please. So these hyper-independent children, now adults, are avoiding to need someone, which means they will avoid to let someone in their lives, which means they will avoid to bond with someone, which means they will avoid to love someone. And of course, they will avoid to rely on someone sharing what they need help with or what they need from others. Sometimes what they need is not just practical help, but love. Uh, a very good way to push someone away, I found, is to tell them that you need something of them that they can't give you. People just magically disappear when you make an emotional request they can't deal with. So, of course, it's not science fiction or it's not an irrational fear to think, oh, if I tell someone what I need, they're going to walk away. They might. They actually might. But also what is real is if we rely on someone, they can fail us. It's not like these fears are something we can be like, no, that's not possible. That's not going to happen. So that's the way to sort of move through this is not to pretend like these fears are not real. People are going to leave if you have needs and they can't meet them or they feel overwhelmed by them. You may also deal with a sort of a reaction from yourself that now that you're actually open to sharing your needs, you become overly needy, like you're regressing and it's hard and you can't even do anything on your own anymore. Um, and also people can fail you. So it's not a matter of pretending these things don't exist, but when we're trying to think about how do we move through this is we have to build the resilience to recover disappointment or to recover being failed or to recover being rejected for our needs without translating that to be as we're not worthy of being met. Because that's the thing we're avoiding, right? If we've been... Um, left in our needs chronically, then when we have needs and people don't meet them, we became ashamed for having those needs. We became ashamed for having needs that people don't want to meet. Like who, how low of a worth do we have for people not to want to meet our needs? So what we're really avoiding is for our needs to be seen so we have them, and that's a shame of it on its own. And also imagine they're seen, they're being put out there, and people reject them, don't want to meet them. Double shame. And that could be very uh, a very big hit for us. A hit we have to learn 
how to recover from. But I think many of these strong children that I'm talking about have adapted in a way where they would rather not risk experiencing that and just go back to being like, I'm just going to rely on myself. I don't know what the outcome of this will be in years to come in your life. I can't know. I don't have access to that information. Um, I do know that the risk also of sharing the fact that you're not this strong person you're pretending to be is difficult. And it can feel risky. And it can feel like you're exposing yourself. I do know there is people with capacity to help you and meet you and um, offer you a different experience than the one you've had. But I also know that maybe there's people who are going to show up pretending or seemingly having that capacity, but then ultimately filling you. So there's no way to predict it's not going to happen. And the decision for strong children to give themselves permission to drop the armor, at least in some contexts or with some people, is something they have to give themselves. And provided that they're willing to take the risk of being failed or disappointed or being seen as someone who has needs. Now, of course, it sounds like a very common sense thing to say, uh, but having needs is not a shameful thing. And if you're listening up until now, I want you to sit down and write a list of the needs that you have that you believe you should be ashamed of. Like, oh, your need to be loved. Your need to be taken care of. You need for someone to listen to you. Your need for someone to, to have interest in your inner world and your processes. Your need for someone to own up to the ways that they've hurt you. Your need for someone to apologize, to validate you. Your need to be respected, to be admired, to be supported, uh, to be helped when you're having a hard time, to be reminded uh, of the things that you forget in terms of what you're capable of doing. The need to know that you're not in this world all alone, fending on your own. And, uh, I want you to wonder if any of those needs sounds like an ash a shameful thing to have. Or is it that you've had those needs and nobody's met them and you're ashamed because of that instead? So this is my invitation for this video. For those of you that are the strong children who became hyper-independent children and created a pride counter identification out of a shameful one the shameful was i'm not worthy of my needs to be met nobody seems to care that i have needs i'm a burden that's the shame the shameful identification of who you are and then to counter uh, counter react to that you became somebody super proud of being hyper independent You weren't supposed to be the strong child. You were supposed to turn into a resilient one. And resilient children and people also know that they need others. And also have an experience that others show up for them. Which is an experience that maybe you do not have. That's all for today. See you guys soon.